Well, the topic that we are going to discuss today, uh, the seminar topic is diagnosis and homeopathy. My aim is to make you aware of what homeopathy is and since you have been hearing about uh, diagnosis from different angles, from different paths, so I will try to put it in this perspective so that you can slightly differentiate that what are the basic differences at the same time what homeopathy is. My producer, my very dear friend Dr. Agarwal has told you a little bit about what homeopathy is. So uh, this is Dr. Samuel Hanneman who is the founder of homeopathy. Well basically I am not a uh, well read in uh, Tibetan medicine. But whatever I have learned, especially for this, uh, when I was coming through, I wanted to go through it, that the, both are approaching through the holism. That means the Tibetan medicine also consider person as one single unit. And they also consider that there is a mind, there is body, they are interrelated. Similarly, homeopathy also consider that the mind, body and another new aspect is added to it, that is the dynamic aspect and these three together, can we have the light please, light on him, little better. And all these three together comprises one single unit. So homeopathy is similar to Tibetan medicine in this aspect that there is holism which is the approach of Tibetan medicine and which is also the approach of homeopathy. There was a question to Dr. Agarwal uh, about what is the relationship of mind and body in homeopathy. Uh, the person who was asking the question, is he here? You were the person. Well, I wanted to, please, I wanted to put it in a different uh, way. We all know about uh, the different ways in which Lord Buddha used to teach the daily teachings. I think we all know about an old lady whose son died and she came to Lord Buddha saying that you are most powerful, please make my son alive. And she was weeping. So Buddha said that I can provided you bring me a handful of mustard from a house in which there is no sadness, there is no death. So the lady went from one house to another house and then another house and in every house she asked do you have any death, do you have any sorrow, any sadness and they all used to narrate their sadness and in this narration from house to house she forgot, forgot her own sorrowness because there were so many other sorrows, so many other sadness which was more stronger to her. This is homeopathy. When we say Similia, similibus curenta means similarity. This is homeopathy that when you have a sorrowness, then another similar sorrow which is stronger that overcomes it. Same is when we select a medicine, we select the medicine based on the symptom that the patient comes and gives. But only our symptoms, our medicine also produces the same symptom. When we give the medicine, the medicine also produces a person comes to us and tells me that I am suffering from headache. Then my medicine will also produce headache in the person, similarity. But my headache will be temporary because my headache is produced by medicine and medicine is being given in very minute doses. So the natural headache will be removed by this artificial headache which is produced because of my headache, uh, medicine. And then this headache which is produced by the medicine that will also go because it is produced by very minute dose. So within a very short period of time the headache will go and person will be healthy. This is all about homeopathy. And this is all about interrelationship of mind and body. So as we say there are three basic poisons, ignorance, attachment and aversion. Similarly, in homeopathy also, we believe that there are three fundamental miasms. We will come to it. 
these are the things all well known to you. I have just put it to show that I have also studied and did my homework. Well, where homeopathy is different from other system of medicine. And believe me when I say that not because I have been practicing homeopathy since last 30 years, not because of that, but because I have also studied other of system of medicine. Because that is what my profession is. I am a clinician as well as a teacher. So I have studied other system of medicine. And then I am telling you that there is one big advantage that homeopathy has. That homeopathic doctor when he is giving a medicine, he exactly knows what will happen what is to be expected. So, homeopathy is simple, but at the same time, a big advantage is he knows what to expect. There is a book written by Hanuman called Organon of Medicine, which is written in small, small paragraphs, aphorisms, so that these numbers, we have aphorism 246. It is easy to remember that way. And that book is the Bible of homeopathy, the basic book of homeopathy. In that he has written that we must be guided as well by the nature of different medicinal substance as also by corporeal constitutions of the patient and magnitude of the disease. So basically, when we are talking about a disease, these are the things which are ultimately going to guide us. The corporeal constitution, the physical makeup of the person, the magnitude of the disease. Why I have picked up this particular so that you can understand <coughs> that when we are talking about diagnosis, because basically this seminar is on diagnosis. So when we are talking about diagnosis, we do consider all the diagnosis that is done by modern medicine. We don't say that we don't believe that a person is suffering from malaria or typhoid or cancer. We believe that. We don't say that do, we don't believe that diseases are caused by microorganisms. We believe that. But we only say that there is something much more to a disease, to a person, than this simple malaria, typhoid, cancer, microorganism bacteria, viruses. It will interest you because it will be very similar to your thought when I say that a person, suppose in this room, I give a spray of mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is the organism which causes tuberculosis. And we all inhale that organism. Now, do you think all of us will suffer from tuberculosis? Some, some of us will not be affected. Even if that bacteria is in our body, but will not be affected. Those who will be affected, they have that something which is making you more susceptible towards getting affected by this disease. And this is the speciality of homeopathy, that it treats that something, that susceptibility. Suppose all of us take very chilled cold drink now. Some of us will have fever, some of us will have sore throat, some of us will enjoy it will not have anything, will like to have one more glass. Why this is different? This is different, we all are made differently. We all are different persons. And homeopathy considers that individuality. Homeopathy considers that person. So when homeopathic doctor diagnose a patient, or diagnosis for a homeopathic doctor is not only limited, to knowing the name of the disease, but it goes beyond. We have to know the individuality of the person, and it treats that individuality of person, which will make some of us suffer from cold cough, some of us having sore throat, or some of us not having anything at all.
that is what the diagnosis for a homeopathic doctor is. So, for a disease, in homeopathy we do not say disease, we say diseased person. We do not say, suppose if there is a honest, if you ask our, our friend Dr. Pankaj Agarwal that you are such a senior homeopathic doctor, do you have medicine for headache? I am sure he will say, no, I do not have medicine for headache. Because in homeopathy, we do not have medicine for headache. We have medicine for a person who is suffering from headache. Because your headache can be different from this person's headache or my headache. I can have a headache in which I want pressing. That makes me feel better. Somebody else can have headache and he does not allow anybody to touch. Or somebody can have a headache in which the person just want to lie down. And these are the things, these are the differences that a homeopathic doctor takes into consideration and then select a medicine based on these things. <coughs> so, pace of the disease or how the disease progresses, in what speed it progresses. The depth, how far, how deep the disease has infiltrated. The intensity with which the, it has affected the person. The sequence in which the symptoms are appearing. All this has to be taken into consideration whenever we are talking about diagnosis. So, how important is disease diagnosis for making a correct prescription. When I am say, talking about correct prescription, I am talking about homeopathic prescription. It is very important. We do not deny the importance of diagnosis. I will give you the points later on. Because on these points, many of the things decide. I am sure you all will agree with me that treatment is not limited only to making a prescription. Treatment is something much beyond prescription. Treatment means giving advice what a person should take, what a person should not take, what a person should eat, what a person should not eat. That also is a part of treatment. Treatment means telling a person that your disease will spread to others, so be careful and be alone, quarantine. Treatment means also telling the person that your disease is very fatal. My pathy will not work here, knowing the limitation. So, it is very important to know about the diagnosis from allopathic point of view, for naming the disease. We call it nosological diagnosis. That is, naming, labeling a disease as typhoid, labeling a disease as malaria or some other disease. We all know the basic things, you know, how the word diagnosis came into this. The diagnosis dia, through a part of, and gnosis means knowledge. So, diagnosis means to know through a part of. And it is a part, art of distinguishing one disease from another. One disease from another. Homeopathy considers distinguishing, distinguishing one person from another. That is the basic difference. The art of determining the nature of a case of disease, that is what the diagnosis is. So, basically diagnosis is a conclusion or decision regarding the identity of the disease of a patient. And this conclusion is arrived by careful noting down the deviations from normal, noting down the deviations in functions noting down the deviations in anatomical structure. When a person is supposed to have hair and when there is no hair, then I say this person is having alopecia because I know what is normal. So, when there is deviation from normal, I take note of that. We all know just the basic things. There are different type of diagnosis. And each one is required for a specific purpose. There can be biological diagnosis. There can be clinical diagnosis. 
I'm not going in details on these things because I want to concentrate more on homeopathy. I, these are just to tell you that there are so many varieties of diagnosis. There is pathological diagnosis. There is physical diagnosis. And in homeopathic system, there is homeopathic diagnosis. But we also consider the disease diagnosis. The homeopathic diagnosis believes that disease manifestation is a direct reflection of the deranged vital force. <coughs> in homeopathy, we consider that this whole body is governed by a dynamic, spiritual, automatic force which we cannot see like any other force. We cannot see gravitational force. We cannot see electricity. We cannot see magnetic force. But we know about these force through their manifestation. When I touch an electric line and it gives me shock, then I understand this is electric. When I throw something and it comes down, then I understand that this is gravitational force. So similarly, when my hand is moving in the correct way, I want to move my left hand, so my left hand is moving. I want to utter these words, so I am uttering these words. I want to stand, so I am standing. That means the force, the vital force is working properly. I, you don't feel that you have eyes, do you? You don't feel that there is a stomach and the food that you have taken, the stomach is functioning. You don't feel it because it is functioning normally. But the moment you have acidity, the moment when you want to see and you cannot see, the moment you have pain in hand, the moment when you want your left hand to rise and right hand is rising, that means the vital force is not functioning properly. Then the person is sick and this sickness is manifested by manifestation we call symptoms. So in homeopathy, we give importance to these symptoms, which are the manifestation of deranged vital force. That is what we mentioned. And the whole aim or basis of prescription in homeopathy, the whole diagnosis is based on individualization. Homeopathy is a scientific system of therapeutics, which is based on identifying the individual as an entity and selecting the similimum, the medicine, similimum is the most similar medicine, according to his own characteristics, which individualizes him. So knowing those characteristics makes you different. Somebody wants a full glass of water and will gulp it. Somebody wants a glass of water but take a small sip and keep it and again five minutes take a small sip. Somebody wants warm water, somebody wants very chilled water and that is also not enough so put some more ice to it. So these are the differences which make a person different from the next person and which is very important from a homeopathic point of view because this is the basis on which we give medicine and that is what individualization is. And this individualization is not limited to any particular hand or part on any part system. It is to the person as a whole. That is why it is called holistic approach. The effectiveness of homeopathy is attributed to the fact that the treatment is individualized to each patient. That is why sometimes, you know, homeopathic doctors take too much of time because they ask too much questions. Many a times, patient comes to us with headache and we ask him question like, what type of food you like? And he become very angry that I came for headache and you are asking me what type of food, are you a hotel person or you are going to give me food or what? My purpose at that time is only to individualize that person from other persons suffering from headache. I want to know where this person is different from other person. The effectiveness of homeopathy is attributed to the fact that the treatment is individualized to each patient. Remedies are given to treat the individual as a whole and not to a sick part. Homeopathy believes that each individual has some characteristic, some point of difference 
which will make him different from other person. Every person reacts to any external agent according to his or her individuality. It is the role of a homeopath to identify this individuality and this individuality is all that is important for a homeopathic physician. And the process by which we ask question, there is a pattern, there is a system in which the questions are to be asked. And that process is called case taking. You know, any system, whether it is my system or your system or allopathy or any system, system of treatment, what is your opinion? It is an art or a science. Tibetan medicine is an art or a science. Anyone would like to answer this? Yeah. No, no, don't mutter. Tell me. <laughs> Anybody will like to say this? Sir, you? What is your opinion? You don't need to stand. Just tell me. One word. Art or science? Both. Eh? making four five elements in balance. I know that. Mm. I have read that. Mm. <laughs> when what I booked the our, ticket, I went our, through our all the information about on. Tibetan medicine. Our viewpoint on that, five elements, we have to... No, on my that. question is oh. that art or science? Or maybe a science. Maybe a science. Mm. Sir, spill it, spill it, sir. Not only Tibetan medicine, any system of medicine, it will never become a science only. There is some component of science and there is some component of art. Because when it becomes a total science, whether it is Tibetan medicine or my medicine, you don't need a practitioner, you need a computer. Because it has to be art, because from person to person it has to vary. You can tell me that you have to see the pulse of a person. But in which person how to hold the hand, that cannot be taught. That has to vary from person to person. And that is what makes it art as well as science. As I was telling you that in aphorism, aphorism means the paragraph that is written in organon. Organon is the Bible of homeopathy. Hanuman said, no genuine cure of the soric disease or any of the remaining disease can take place without strict individualized treatment of each case of disease. What is soric disease? Uh, if time permits, we will come to that. So classification of disease which is very important and which is the main topic when we are talking about diagnosis. In homeopathy, we say that diseases are basically of two types. Diseases are acute and diseases are chronic. In acute disease, there is certain characteristic and that characteristic decides that it is acute. For example, acute disease comes suddenly. Acute disease can kill a person or the person will get well without need of a medicine. You all know that when a person is suffering from influenza, it is said that you don't give medicine, the person will get medicine, the person will get well in one week. So it is a type of acute disease because in that either person will get well or not get well. And for every acute disease, there is some exciting cause. We all are living and then suddenly you fell down, that excites a disease condition. You take too much of rich food, that excites a condition. You take exposure to very cold wind, air or cold drink or mental, you are suddenly tensed up for your exam or for your some home worries or some other worries and that produce certain condition. So you need a exciting cause. The condition in chronic disease is just different. The condition in chronic disease is that it comes very slowly. 
sometimes it comes so slowly that unless and until it is fully aggravated, unless a person doesn't even know that he is suffering from disease. And it slowly and slowly engulfs the full person until at one moment he finds that he cannot handle it himself, then he visits a physician. And if he is lucky, he visits a homeopathic physician and homeopathic physician consider it as chronic disease and then try to find out the fundamental cause. That is sora, syphilis and psychosis. Let me come to that. Yeah. So acute diseases, sudden onset, last moderately for a fixed time, and prognosis in acute disease, they always end in recovery or death. Even without, we are talking about when no medicine is given, then. And acute diseases are of three types depending upon how many persons are affected. This is the homeopathic concept I am sharing with you. When only one person is affected, it is called individual type of acute disease. When a group of, small group of person is affected, it is called sporadic. And when it is a large number of people of one particular geographical area, then it is called epidemic. But for all, there has to be some exciting cause. And in order to prescribe a homeopathic medicine, it is important that you should come to that cause. You should know the cause. You should assess the cause. In case of chronic diseases, the situation is just different. Here, the onset is very gradual, very slow. And the duration is fast indefinitely. And prognosis, short, short death. When uh, no medicine is given, slowly and slowly it starts with one system and as a whole, the person as a whole is affected till the person dies. This is the basic difference between acute disease and chronic disease. Types of chronic diseases are, there are true chronic diseases. Then we have pseudo-chronic diseases. Pseudo-chronic diseases are which looks like chronic disease. Suppose there is a person who is living in a very damp place, damp area, and that person suffers from bronchial asthma, or a person is living in a very polluted area, coal mines, or polluted like your city, Godolia. And then that person suffers from cough, cough or asthma. Do you think in spite of our best medicine, whether it is your medicine or my medicine, the person can be cured? No, unless and until you remove the person from this pollution. Because that is the reason why this is called, so disease is looking like a chronic disease, but is not a chronic disease, it is pseudo chronic disease. Then we have artificial chronic disease. In today's time, this is the biggest problem anywhere in the world. They are caused by medication. I think you all of, I am trying to describe a person and I am sure you all will find that you know this person. He can be your relative, he can be your friend and if you are so unlucky, it can be yourself. There was a person who suddenly, just like that, he felt headache and heaviness in the head. And then he went to a doctor or asked any one of his friends, just check my blood pressure. And blood pressure was checked and it was found that blood pressure, we all know normal blood pressure is 120 by 80 and it was found that the blood pressure is slightly raised. So he went to a doctor and doctor gave him take this medicine. And then he asks, how many doses? Well, doses, whole life. And he started taking that antihypertensive medicine. And after five years, 
he has thyroid problem. So earlier he started with a small tablet of antihypertensive. Now he have antihypertensive along with that thyroid. After two years, he has sleeplessness. So now he has antihypertensive with thyroid and another medicine for sleep. And then after two years or one year, he starts suffering from gas. So now he have to take a medicine for gas daily morning and then he takes a medicine for hypertension and then a medicine for thyroid and then a medicine for sleeplessness. And very soon he is not taking his lunch because he's full with medicine. And these diseases, all these are created by medication and it is called artificial chronic disease. So, diagnosis, why it is important for diagnosis? It is important for diagno to diagnose a case so that we can know what is the prognosis of the case. Prognosis means what will happen tomorrow. A person is sick, whether the sickness is going to make the person dead or the person is going to save. The person is going from this disease to that disease, from this system to that system. That is called prognosis. And diagnosis is important so that you can understand what is the prognosis. It is important for management of a case to diagnose. For a person suffering from anti uh, hypertension, you have to advise don't take or don't take this, don't take that. Or a person suffering from gastric troubles, you have to advise accordingly. For that, it is important that you should know the diagnosis so that you can advise the diet. Whether the person can be cured of the disease or not. There is no system in this world which can say that I can cure all the diseases. Every system has its limitation. There is no harm in knowing our limitation. So in order to know whether my system can cure the disease or whether the disease in itself is curable or not, I have to know what type of treatment I should give. For acute, the treatment is different. For chronic, the treatment is different. Where is the location of the disease? What is the stage of the disease? The diagnosis tells us. Is it cancer fourth stage? Or is it just the primary stage? The metastasis has occurred or not occurred? Whether the disease is natural or disease is not natural? Whether the person need to be kept separately in isolation so that his disease should not spread to other person? or he can be live among everybody. In homeopathy, it is very important that we should know what is common, what is uncommon. We should know the nature of new symptoms that is appearing because that will tell me my medicine is going in the correct direction or not in the correct direction. And diagnosis is also important to ascertain the effect of treatment. To arrive at the diagnosis, homeopathically speaking, we have to take into consideration these points, presenting complaint, his history taking, then personal history has to be taken into consideration, his family history, clinical investigation, all these things are very important. Then these things are di discussed in detail. I was telling you about the causation. There are three causations in homeopathy. Exciting cause, which excites a disease and causes acute disease. Then there is fundamental cause or miasm. Miasms are dynamic cause of the disease. There are basically of three types. And then there is maintaining cause, maintains a disease. A person is having cough and he is smoking. So, the cough is the disease and smoking is the maintaining cause which is maintaining the disease. The miasm, sora, syphilis and psychosis. When there are changes in the functional level, then it is sora. The, and how do we know what are the level on which changes have occurred by the symptoms? The symptoms tells me 
that the changes are on a functional level or changes are on a pathological level. See, a person having gastric carcinoma can have gas formation or a person just having too rich food can have gas formation. So it is by this symptom, the nature of gas formation, I will be able to understand whether this is a functional disturbance or some serious thing has undertaken. And this differentiation can be done by considering the miasm that is Tora when there are functional disturbance, psychosis when there are overgrowth and syphilis when there are destruction. Personal history and family history I have told you, these are important to know. Clinical examination we all know. Well, there are limitations. It is not that the diagnosis is everything. There are limitations to diagnosis also. Diagnosis is not possible in every case. That is why, you know, there are so many big, big hospitals, but they make wrong diagnosis. And that is why sometimes the patient die. In early stages when the changes are just on a functional level, suppose I am not feeling well. If I go to a doctor, a routine doctor, can he diagnose anything? He will have me CT scan to my foot, everything. But there will be no diagnosis because changes or this not feeling well has not gone to a level where it can be seen through X-ray or CT scan or MRI. So diagnosis is not possible in early stage of disease and you are not sure for any diagnosis. For any diagnosis, whether it is the cancer or it is simple cold and cough, I am telling you from my personal experience. If time, if time is not there, otherwise I would have loved to share with you my experiences where diagnosis has made wrong, people die because of wrong diagnosis. And then a small sorry is all they get from big hospitals. Diagnosis based treatment leads to pathetic condition. Diagnosis under treatment, uh, oriented treatment cannot cover complete totality. No treatment of susceptibility. That is what I told you. When a person is, suppose there are persons who have this tendency to catch cold. Every change of weather they catch cold. No diagnosis. But this person is suffering. And in such condition, you cannot make a diagnosis. And in such condition, only those treatment, whether it is homeopathy or Tibetan medicine, which consider the person as a whole, that only can help. Well, I hope I have finished within the line. <laughs> I was going fast so that I don't put you in trouble. Yeah, uh, I'm thankful to you, thankful to the organizers for giving me this uh, opportunity for meeting you people. I have come here earlier, but seen the other part of Sarnath. I didn't know, in fact, that there is such a wonderful university here with so many nice people. So it has been nice to meet you all. And uh, I'm sure we can again meet sometimes with more time so that we can discuss and I can get questions and, you know, have a proper discussion with you. But thank you so much for being such a nice audience. Thank you so much. Sure, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And due to time constraint, we can only take one question because. Do we have any question or tea is waiting? <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Mm. You told that uh, homeopathy. Let us start by introducing you. Um, my name is Tilly Omo. Uh, I'm from Nepal, sorry for International College. Uh, my, uh, my question is. Uh, you told that hom homeopathy treats the uh, susceptibility of a disease, right? Yes. And you also told that diagnosis is uh, not mean for, uh, like, cannot diagnose the susceptibility of disease. Yes. This, can you explain it further? Uh, you, the second part of the question is that diagnosis of a susceptibility cannot be there. For example, if I have uh, this tendency to catch cold, Whenever there is weather change, I have this tendency to catch cold. You go to any doctor and ask him, sir, what is the name of my disease? Don't ask for medicine. Ask him, what is the name for, of my disease? 
he will have you go undergo all the possible investigation but ultimately he won't have an answer because diagnosis there is a fixed rule if those things are done those things are present then only diagnosis can be made but i said tendencies can be removed by homeopathy because such type of things can be taken care for only by homeopathy i'll give one other example Many of us have this problem that we have sweating in the palm, especially when there is exam or when there is tension, there is sweating in the palm. You go to any doctor, ask him, sir, what is my disease or can you give me a medicine? He will give you a medicine because he is a doctor, but he can't give you a medicine which will help you remove your this problem. And such problems is where homeopathy comes into play. Which part of Nepal you are from? Kathmandu. Kathmandu. Wonderful. There are so many good homeopathic doctors in Kathmandu. And most of them know me. Just give them, give them a visit. Yeah, any other question? One more question. One. Is there anybody? You want to ask? Hello. Um, maybe do you... My ignorance, but I t still didn't get what kind of method or tool they are used to diagnosis. Like in our Tibetan medicine, we used to uh, urine analysis or blood, blood readings, and also in allopathic, they are used uh, blood tests, all this. So, what kind of uh, method or tool they are in, uh, in your tradition use? I mean, what type of method we use? Yeah, to diagnose a uh, disease. Uh, uh, you have to start by introducing yourself. Okay, I'm, my name is Tenzi Pinzun. I am from the Tibetan Medical and Astrology in Dharamsala. Uh, my dear friend, that uh, I am not so well versed in Tibetan medicine. But I know this much that I can have a debate with you that there is no system of diagnosis in Tibetan medicine. Just because there is a system in allopathy does not mean that we also need to have a system. Tibetan medicine is totally different. Why should we name a disease? Similarly, homeopathy is totally different. Why I have to name a disease? Our, concept, our classification of disease is different. We say, as I have told you here, that diseases are acute. Diseases are chronic. Acute are individual, sporadic, epidemic. It may not tally with your modern medicine, that is why it is different and this is important because our treatment, approach of the treatment is different. When I know that this person, I can diagnose that my, this patient is suffering from acute disease of sporadic type, then my approach will be different. And in another case, if I come to know that this person is suffering from chronic disease but pseudo chronic disease, then my approach to the treatment will be different. So every system has its own method of classification or diagnosis. Our method of diagnosis is individualistic. We consider every person to be different from other persons. And our classification is like I have seen, told you here, acute and chronic and miasm, sora, syphilis, and psychosis. I am sure I have not satisfied you. Let us have a discussion while tea. Is that all? Or be uh, thank you so much, sir, for such a wonderful presentation. To do the honor by offering uh, this Khadi Shawl and uh, Certificate of Appreciation, may I call upon, we request our Dean, Professor Lofsan Tenzin, Faculty of Sawarikwa and both Jyotish, to do the honor.